arms were wrapped around her neck, and Amy was falling down. She had her, did she have her hand around her throat? Or I don't know if it was arm? like this, or if her hand was, I believe her hand was like this, and the other arm was around it like this. Friends, this is police officer Megan Glory. On June the 8th, 2017, her ex-girlfriend, Deanna Stevenson, entered the home of her current girlfriend, Amy Plunkett. In the home was Megan, Amy, their mother, Ollie, and Deanna. Unfortunately, Deanna ends up dead. What happened? Who took her life? In this video, I'm going to show you the interrogations of all those involved. I'm going to start with Megan. Let's see what happened. Tell me what happened this morning. I was sleeping and I heard Amy's mom come in and say someone at the door. So then Amy got up and then I got up behind her and they opened the door and Deanna was out there. Mm -hmm. Then we went, started screaming and yelling and then Deanna said, take me home, take me home. So I was trying to calm her down because I believe she was drunk, I'm not really sure, mm -hmm. but she reeked. And of then, alcohol? Mm -hmm. And then um, she, I got in between her and Amy because they were screaming at each other. And I said, you need to leave. You need to go. Get in your car and go. And then she jumped through me and attacked Amy and had Amy by the neck and was choking her. At that point, I don't know who when got you, the When gun. you say choking, uh, choking her, what, what do you mean choking her? How was, how like her arms were wrapped around her neck and Amy was falling down. She had her, did she have her hand around her throat? Or I don't know if it was arm? like this or if her hand was like, I believe her hand was like this and the other arm was around it like this. Um, and then they were falling. So then I was trying to pry Dean off of her and I was yelling, stop, stop. And I don't know who got the gun. I don't know. I don't know if her mom got it out or if Amy got it out before then. I'm not really sure. So you never saw the gun? The no, I never saw it. I had no clue who even had it. Mm -hmm. So then I'm telling Deanna to leave, you know, get off of her, get off of her, and I'm trying to pull her off. Well, then she tries to get me and hit me, and so Amy, they're still wrestling back and forth, and then that's when she was shot. Okay. It all happened, like, so fast, I don't even know what to feel. Do you, uh, what's your past with uh, Deanna? Abusive. So, okay, let's backtrack. We were together for six years. We own our house. Have She has a son. Um, we broke up a little over a year ago. And it's been rocky ever since. Um, she would threaten me, and she was abusive in the past. Threaten you by means of what? Like what calling me and threatening me that she was going to um, self and not threatening me, like, for my life to be in danger, but threatening, like, to kill myself mm -hmm. um, or Amy to kill Amy. Um, and then, so we haven't lived together in probably f four or five months. Um, did you know her to have any uh, possession of firearms or anything like that? Deanna? Mm -hmm. No, she has none. She has no firearms? Mm -mm. There was never, let me rephrase it, there was never any in our house mm -hmm. when we lived together. So I don't know if there is now. I don't right. know because she works at the prison in um, Milton. Okay. Um, so I don't know if there is now. I don't know if there's any in her car. I have no clue what her intentions were. She's never come to the house before like that. Um, and I know she worked last night and the last thing she, I had talked to her. She had asked me to go feed the dogs um, that are at our house, her two dogs. Um, and I told her, okay, I wasn't going to be able to make it. Then her mom said she was going to go do it. So I tr put my house key at her mom's house. And that was the last I had talked to her. And then at like eight 30, she texted my phone and said, what did she say? Amy has a hold on you. And I forget what the other message said. And then that was it. I never I said, I'm not doing this with you tonight. I'm not fighting with you. Have a good night or bye or something. And she said, oh, you never do. And that was at like 8.40 last night. And I had talked to her since then. And I went to sleep last night and then woke up this morning. I have no clue what time it even was this morning to her banging on the door. Okay. When you were able to get in there, what did you hear her saying? Who's saying? Uh, Deanna. All I heard her say was, where's Meg? Where's Meg? Because I didn't, initially I didn't go out because I was asleep. So I got up after like a minute after Amy had opened the door and they were, I don't know what they were saying. They were exchanging words of some sort. I think she was saying leave or get off my porch, get off my porch, leave. Um, and then Deanna kept saying, where's Meg? Where's Meg? Where's Meg? When I come around the corner and I said, what do you want? What do you need? And she said, take me home. 
And I said, what, what is the deal? And then Amy said, you need to get in your car. You need to leave. You need to leave. Well, then at that point, she had attacked Amy. And then I believe she went after her mom. When you say she attacked Amy, what did she do? She just, like, lunged at her and then put her arms around her. And she was punching her. Um, she was punching her for sure. Um, and then she had her by the throat. And that's whenever I tried to get in and break it up. And then that's whenever the gunshot happened. Okay. And then so. after after the shots were fired, what did you what did you do or what did you see after that? After that, Amy knelt down by her and was trying to cover her up. Um, and then there was blood everywhere, obviously. And then she yelled to me, go get a towel, go get a towel. So I went and got a towel for her. And then she was doing that. And then I was outside the whole time after that, okay. just waiting. I had, oh, I called 911 um, and told them what happened. And sure. they were on the phone with me. And I was trying to get her to breathe and talk to her. But at that point, it was... Tell me about what uh, you saw when she had Amy by the throat. So I believe she had her like this and then her arm wrapped around her. And Amy was like trying to breathe, of course. And then they went backwards. Was she gasping or did, was she saying anything? She wasn't saying anything. No, okay. she wasn't saying anything. And then they fell back into the, the two chairs on the front porch. And I was at that point trying to pull Dee and I said, please stop, please stop. And then from there, everything else. I don't know what happened after that. And then I was in the middle. I know I was in the middle of them too. And she tried to lunge, not lunge. She tried to, um, she was hitting Amy in the face. And then I said, stop, stop. And then she had her by the throat after she hit her in the face. And that's when they both fell to the ground. You're fine. And that's when they fell to the ground. And then the gunshots. Okay. Anything else you can think of? No. I just, I'm so in shock. I don't know even what happens. I don't. Well, I'm about to write the report, obviously. And I'm still going to talk to Amy's mother. Um, how long have y'all you stayed over there at Amy's? I think Amy said something about you moved in earlier this year. Mm -hmm. I was like, I think I've been there like three to six months, three to five months, something like that. And you still stay in contact with Deanna? Yes. Well, for the house reason. I mean, she would text me and call me and stuff, and we would communicate for like bills or the dogs or whatever. Does she have another girlfriend? I believe so, but I don't know for sure. I'm not 100% sure on that. We're not, we don't talk about things like that. I know she was with somebody, but I don't know if they're still together, if they were still together. Tell me about the restraining order that you had on her. Okay, so that was back, I don't even know the month, but that was due to her, um, every time I'd go to the house, she would yell, scream, try and hit me. She had been abusive, had pushed me down, had grabbed me by the throat a couple of times. Um, and so I just, I felt unsafe and... Um, not safe in my home mm -hmm. so that's when i finally thought i was done with this i need mean, something needs to happen um so i did the restraining order um she went and stayed wherever she went and stayed and then we went to court and then everything was there wasn't enough evidence to continue, continue it so then it was thrown out and then she stayed in the house and i didn't stay back in the house after that uh did she say anything after the restraining order was um was uh dismissed she have any kind of physical altercations or anything like that? I never that? went around for that to happen again. Okay. Um, when I went to the house one time afterwards, she threw a dish on the ground, but she didn't like attack me with it. She didn't throw it at me or anything, but that was it. And then I left. But I never was around her alone again to experience any other. Do you, um, and I assume that uh, just by looking at Deanna and then looking at Amy, Deanna's quite a bit bigger than Amy is. Mm -hmm. um, during the time that that Deanna was choking Amy, did you have any feelings? As far, how did that make you feel? Did you feel like Amy was in fear of her life of being choked out? I did feel that yes, because I know I've I've felt the end of Deanna before. Mm -hmm. She has abused me before. She has choked me before. So I know the feeling. So yes, I was very scared, okay. and I didn't want any of this, of course, to happen. But I did feel, and I tried to stop it. I tried to pull Deanna off because I know how she gets, right. especially after she's been drinking. When she's been drinking, it's times a thousand with the anger. Okay. But I don't even know what possessed her to come to the house and drive her car. I, I don't know. How did she know that where y'all live? She's driven by before. And I believe her girlfriend or ex-girlfriend, whoever she is, told her because Amy knows her. 
And that's how I can only assume she knows. That's where we live. Okay. Who was sleeping on the couch right there inside the door? Amy's mom. So Amy's mom was there and y'all were in the bedroom? Mm-hmm. Okay, is that normal? Is it mm-hmm. for her mom to sleep on the yeah. couch? Either on the couch or in the uh, on a blow-up mattress. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll be right back with you, okay? All right. Uh, the scene's been, been released. Uh, we're going to get you guys back over there. Uh, when you get there, we're going to have to take all of your clothes. We're going to need you to change. And then we're just going to take the clothes you have. You're taking these clothes right yeah. now? Okay. But we'll do it once we get over there. Okay. Whose jacket do you have? So one of the officers, um, he drove here. Oh, okay. Far or one of them guys? Not far, but what is his name? Amy knows his name. I don't know. Okay. You just gave it to me because I don't have any undergarments on. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> All right, we'll, uh, we're going to get you back over there in just a second, okay? Okay. Right, so that's the end of Megan's interview. There's three points to this. Number one, she spoke in a firm tone. Number two, she did not stutter. And number three, most importantly, she didn't see anything about her ex. She never said anything bad about Deanna. She didn't try and put her down. You know what I mean? She didn't give the impression that she looked down upon Deanna or that she wanted this to happen. Therefore, I believe she's telling the truth and this is a case of self-defense in a sense. However... Let's move it on and let's go to the next interview of Amy Plunkett, who in this case is Megan's girlfriend. Tell me what happened. We were, we were all sleeping. My alarm was going off. My alarm, I have to be at work at six. Mm-hmm. And I was um, just getting out of bed, about to get out. And my mom knocks on the bedroom door and asks us, she wakes us, well, I'm already getting up and asks if we're expecting anybody. And I said, no, why? Somebody's knocking and banging on the door. So naturally, I grab my gun. It's still dark outside. Mm-hmm. And I go to the door, and it's Deanna, my fiance's ex. I'm like, you need to leave now. Well, first she starts asking, is this where Amy Plunkett lives? Because it's still dark. I don't know. Because I have the door cracked about this much. So my gun is beside me. My Are you all talking through the door? Or no, the, the door's open. It's like, I mean, my body's in the, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you need to leave. You know, you're not welcome here. You need to leave. I'm not leaving. Where's Meg? I was like, she's not coming out. You need to leave. So I shut the door and I lock it. And uh, she, and I walk off and she starts ringing the doorbell, continuously banging back on the door. So I come back over and I set my gun on the TV stand or whatever that's by, that's by the front door, by the TV. Mm-hmm. And I open the door and I'm like, you need to leave. You know, you're not welcome here. I don't know why you're here. I'm not leaving. Tell Meg to come out. Blah, 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 blah. Well, about that time. Megan comes out like from the bedroom and comes out the front door and then um, she gets real close and gets up in my face. Deanna does. Okay. Megan's still behind me because I'm not letting her out the doorway. Did yeah. Deanna step up into the door? She stepped up to the door. <coughs> At this point, Megan had, we had stepped out onto the stoop okay. and then um, she grabbed Megan and was like, come on, take me home. And I'm like, get your hands off of her. And I snatched Megan back. And about that time, she shoved my face. And then it was all over from there. She, we fought all over. Um, she was punching me. We fell. I hit my head on the the windowsill, the big window. Uh, apparently, both of mine. And it was just, it was all. My mom is trying to come out, and I tell her we're telling her to get back in. I'm trying to tell Megan to get back in. She's trying. She's trying to get in between Deanna and I, mm-hmm. and she's just steadily swinging. And by this point, she has got me in a chokehold where I can't breathe. Like she's got me down and pinned to where I can't breathe and digging into. How did she, did she, was she with behind her hand. you? Um, she was beside me, but Megan was trying to break us up. So she had it through there. Did she had you, did she have you by her hand? Yeah, by her hand. And okay. then she, I guess she had, from I was looking up, you know, I was trying to calm it to where I could breathe because mm-hmm. I, I couldn't breathe. And um, by this point we had, the chair was everywhere. We had fallen and we had, went to the ground at some point and mm-hmm. then I heard the shots and I look up and my mom had shot her because we were on the ground. She still had her hand around my throat. Okay. At any point in time, did you think that uh, she had gotten the best of you more or less? Yes. I mean, I couldn't breathe. I, mean, I started like blacking out and she wasn't stopping. Megan was screaming for her to stop. My mom was screaming like she was not letting go. And could we had you, already called the police, but... Could you speak at that time? No. So your airway was obstructed? Yes. Okay. 
were you in um, were you in fear for your life? Did I think if somebody hadn't gotten there quick, yes, it would have went. Because so you felt like you were you were going to pass out. Yes, I did. Okay. All right. And then after you heard the shots, what happened after that? After I heard the shots, um, I was she stopped fighting. I looked down and then I started rendering aid to Deanna. Mm -hmm. I told mom to go sit down and put the gun up, you know, because I looked up when she stopped and I had seen a little bit, but I didn't know right then that she was. You know, she was shot. I looked and I seen the one in the shoulder mm -hmm. and then this one. And I immediately covered them and started rendering aid. Okay. Even though she had just attacked you? Even though she had just attacked me. What was Megan doing at this time? Trying to get my mom to sit down and calm down and, you know, pace him, getting me a towel. They got me, she got me a towel to put on her to cover the wounds. And, mm -hmm. you know, this is all new to her. Right. So she was doing whatever I was, you know, trying to get mom to calm down because mom was just pacing back and forth. But, you know, she was in shock. Had you and Deanna had any problems in the past? She would run her mouth. She would call my phone. She's, um, me and my fiance have been together 13 months. Mm -hmm. And um, she would call my phone and text my phone. Um, but she run her mouth throughout town. She would harass Megan all the time. She'd call her, blow up her phone. She was very abusive, been abusive to her for six years. Mm -hmm. How long were they together? Six and a half years, six years. Okay. And she was verbally, physically, and mentally. And finally it got to the point where it got so bad because they have a house, but it got so bad with Megan staying there that she moved in with me and my mom mm -hmm. and has been there since the middle of February. Like okay. all of, most of her stuff is there. Her dog is there. And this is the first time that she's, she's known where we've lived. You know, she's always, she's always thrown out threats. But, Such as what? Um, I'll beat your ass if I see you, blah, blah, you know, but I've never, the last time that we had words was in January when Megan fought a restraining order against her and the restraining order was dropped. Um, based on other issues. Who um, dropped it? The, the, the court judge, system, the judge dropped it? The judge dropped it because Deanna's attorney, the only three things they talked about was whether Megan was in a new relationship, my name, and if my car was at the house, you know, their, their house, mm -hmm. the morning of court. So nothing was talked about for the abuse or anything like that. So it was dropped. So when we left there, we went to her house to grab her dog and her belongings. Well, Deanna showed up with her mother. She sh Deanna showed up with her new girlfriend, her mother, um, the fiance and then a couple of friends and they started showing their behind. I mean, they were all in my face and her sister showed up trying to trip me. I never said anything to them. Um, you know, it, that's the last time that I've actually seen Deanna in person was in, I guess the end of January, like 17th, January 18th. of this year. Yeah. is the last time. And that was, and I didn't say anything then we got Megan's stuff and we left like they, they were all in our face and, you know, in my face, her and her sister threatening me, you know, I mean, I trying to trip me and this and that. So I just left because I knew it would turn into something physical okay. if I said anything. And all we were trying to do was get Megan's stuff out. Gotcha. Uh, had, has Deanna ever come over there to your, to your home before? No, not, not this one. She followed her when I lived at my old house last year. She followed her about halfway and then turned around. Okay. And had you had any contact with Deanna, like over the phone as she called and threatened you or anything like that? The last time she texted me was to tell Megan to call her. When was that? This weekend, I think. What would you say to that text? I didn't respond. Didn't I never respond responded. The last time I responded was, what, a month and a half ago, two months ago when we were in Biloxi. She texted me and told me to tell Meg to call her, and I said, no, I won't. And she said, why the the fuck not and I never responded after that but she she just was blowing up Megan's phone yesterday from work screaming at her and all kinds of stuff like it's this has been an ongoing thing between them for and I've always stayed out of it I've never texted her anything inappropriate like anything like that okay so she was texting Megan well they talked on the phone she was at work. She called her from her work phone at Blackwater. That was yesterday, right? Yes. She was mad because Megan wouldn't go to the house and feed Deanna's dogs. 
and then it went downhill from there. I shouldn't say downhill. They just, she called her a couple of times and then she quit, she quit calling after she hung up, after Deanna hung up on Megan. Well, if she knows that you guys are together and uh, engaged and then she, does she still have a new girlfriend? We don't, I would assume so. I don't know though. We don't, we don't, we don't communicate like that. Like my, Deanna would tell her, but then it got to where she wasn't. I don't know. So why would she keep calling? She, because she's, she's been abusive and controlling and for so long mm -hmm. that it's when Megan finally stopped doing for her or stopped being the paycheck or whatever. It's, it's been like this for a year okay. and, um, it's just she's never let it go. This is the first time why she showed up. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the car was still running. As she Was she drunk? I think she was drunk. When, when did she get off of work? Or was she supposed she to? She got off of work at 8 o'clock last, last night. Last night? She works 8 to 8 at Blackwater. Like, we took the key, the house key, to Deanna's mother yesterday and put it in the mailbox so her mother could go feed the dog. And then went back at 8.30 and picked it up out of the mailbox. And that was the end of the night. And then this morning she shows up. I, I mean, there was plenty of nights that she would go out drinking in her uniform and never go home. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't, I mean, I can't speak for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it happened so quick. I, I don't, I would assume that she was drunk. That's the only option because she lives off of West Roberts. She hangs out at the Sleepy Hollow. Okay. All right. What injuries do you have other than your obvious on your neck and the scratch on your face? Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know. I mean, we went, the back of my head hurts from where I hit the windowsill when she... Do you need anybody to come and check all that out? No, I'm good. That's the end of Amy's interview. I've next got the interview of their mother, Ollie. But just to bring you up to speed in case you were confused, Deanna, the victim, came to the house. Amy opens. She attacks Amy. She's strangling Amy. Right, Megan tries to take her off and then Ollie, the mother who was asleep, got the gun and after a couple of warnings, she shoots Deanna who died. So for me, everything they're saying I think it did happen. The question that remains is was the action taken the right action to be taken? Let's have a look at Ollie's interrogation first and then we can conclude on this case. Tell me what, what started this whole thing this morning. What, what were you doing? Were you... Where were you at in the house when all I this started? I was sleeping on my couch like I always do. Okay, so you were asleep right there just inside the door. Mm -hmm. And what did you hear or what did you see? The doorbell rang and I looked out the window like I always do because that's weird. Mm -hmm. for somebody ringing my doorbell. That early in the morning? Yeah. Okay. Something or somebody tried to come charging in. And... Were they were were they having uh, words back and forth? Then were they yelling at each other? Was Amy telling them to? Amy was screaming at her to get out, get off the porch, get away. And the girl, I don't know. She just started beating on everybody. Who did she jump on first that you saw? Amy. And then I went out there to try to help him, and she started beating on me. Where did she hit you at, Mr. Uh, Pinky? I was so scared. It's understandable. It's you had every right to be scared. You were just woken up out of your sleep. She just started punching and hit me, got me in the corner, started punching me. Started and hitting you on the right side of the head? Yes. Were you, were you on the porch or were you inside? I was house? half of my house, half on the porch. Okay. She was pulling me out. She was trying to pull you out of the house? Do you remember her saying anything to you? No, I just remember telling her, please go, please go. I didn't want to hurt anybody. So 
I picked up the gun, I shot a warning shot. I really did. And I don't know if it ricocheted up the, the storage door or not. But I did, I fired a warning shot. Told her to leave. And she still had a, Amy and Megan on the ground. Now, this girl was... Did she, um, <laughs> when when uh, you were yelling for someone to call the police, had she already taken your cell phone? Uh-huh. And, and Did threw she, it. she snatch it out of your hand? Uh-huh. What was she doing to Amy? Beating on Amy. And, and with, her, with her fist? Yeah. She was doing everything, even Megan. I was so scared. What was Amy saying? Amy kept telling her to get off the porch and go home. She was 12. Megan kept telling her. And so you picked up, where was the gun laying when you picked it up? Do you remember? By my TV. Okay. You, you picked up the gun. Why didn't I pick it up? I just wanted to scare and make her go away. She was hurting everybody. She was going to kill us. I guess she was me, but I didn't shoot a did I? I shot shots at the door, warning shots. Just trying to get her back. Get her, go away, go away, go away. Did you uh, did you think that she was going to to cause harm to you guys? Yeah. Did you ever see her choking? Megan, or see her, see her choking Amy? I seen her. She would go from one to the other. She had, she had one of them down with, with the, her arm around their neck, and they were gasping. And, and, well, you did what you had to do, sweetheart. They were that so good. I'm about that. I'm not like that. Nobody says I'm not Ms. I'm Blunkett, a good person. Listen to me, Miss Blunkett. Nobody thinks anything of you. Okay. Oh, her family. Listen, <laughs> look, hey, hey, don't, don't worry about that family right now. What? I want what's best for you, and you've got to do what you got to do to protect yourself and to protect the people in your home. Okay? But the, I'm not mean. Miss Blunkett, nobody thinks you're mean. I for sure don't think that you're mean. Too, I, didn't, I didn't want, I just wanted her to go away. And well, and you said in your own words, you said that you thought that she was going to kill y'all. Yeah, I got break really got me. How did you get cut? Do you I remember? don't know. She, I don't. I honestly, I don't know. She had me at one point. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. And she was hitting you at some point. Oh yeah, my head hurt. I just Let me got over shingles. I just got over shingles and But unfortunately, whenever you you fired those shots, you struck me in, and she is now deceased. <sighs> oh my God! But no, I didn't it. mean to hurt. I know you didn't mean to, sweetheart. But you had to protect yourself, and you have to protect your family. You're in your own home. Okay. <laughs> Miss Punk, look at me. I know you didn't mean for this type of thing to happen. There's no ill will. There's no intent here for you, for this to happen. That girl came over on her own. She started fighting with Amy, and she starts fighting with Megan. Then she starts harming you in your home. You stand your ground. You do what you have to do to protect yourself and to protect your home and the people inside your home. Oh. And you did that. Oh. oh, my God. Oh, I don't even... I don't hurt no... I walk away from... I don't hurt no... I mean, what happened? No. Can I let Amy come in here and, and sit with you, sweetheart? She's worried about you. She right. I'm big boy. Well, I'm supposed to be the strong 
what and take care of my shit. What happened? Uh, uh. Miss Plunkin, you did take care of your children. You did the right thing. Oh my God. You did the right thing. You had to take care of yourself. You had to protect yourself and protect your family. You're in your own home. Okay? You're in your own home. Amy loves you. And I know that you love Amy. I so much hate the boys. Don't be ashamed of yourself. I oh my God, did you say she's dead? Yes, ma'am. Oh Lord. oh, Lord. But listen to me. This girl has had, this girl has a pattern of violence towards people. So that didn't kill me. I didn't mean to hurt. I know you didn't, sweetheart. Oh, Lord have mercy. What am I going to tell my grandkids? <laughs> Your grandma was a murderer. Miss Pumpkin, listen to me, sweetheart. You're not a murderer. But look at me. A murderer is somebody that goes out there with ill will and intent to commit a crime. That's not you. That's not you. You're not a murderer. You stood your ground and protected yourself and protected your home and the people inside of your home. This lady brought herself there. This lady attacked you guys. Okay? She did this. She brought this upon herself. She came to your house. You're laying there asleep on you on your couch right next to your front door. You're not a murderer. Look at me, dear. Okay? So I don't want you to think that. By her own choice. She's the one that showed up over there and attacked you guys. What are they going to think of me now? Because I'm going to be fired from my job. Why would you be fired? You're protecting yourself, Miss Plunkett. They have publics don't like you. I don't know why I just said that. You don't worry that. about that. You don't worry about that. I'm sure Sheriff Morgan would be proud of you for standing the ground in your home. And so would Marcus Savage. I know Marcus personally. I myself. wish I could talk to him right now. He's so funny. He's living with my baby. And Mr. Russell next door, bless his heart. He's my buddy. I know I scared him. I hope I didn't hurt him. Only the fever's out. And my three cats. Well, and your little pug dog? That's Megan's. That's Megan's dog. They're all still there. They're in the house. We have them locked up and secured so that they can't run out. They can't escape while we're over there doing our thing. Is there a family been told yet? Her family? I haven't contacted any of them, dear. I wanted to get your side of it and talk with you and talk with Amy and talk with Megan. And we've done that. Her mother's. I know if I go home, they're probably going to come get me now. Who's going to come get you? All my own family and everybody, they're going to be mad. No, ma'am, you don't worry about that. Miss Plunk, but you did what you had to do to protect yourself. That woman was attacking you. She's a whole lot younger than you. She knows better than that. Is she drunk? I don't know that she's, I don't know that she's drunk. I know what Megan says and I know what Amy says about her drinking habit and stuff like that, but we won't know until we do the toxicology on her to see how much alcohol she, she has. She has some doesn't she? She has a what? What was her name again? Uh, Deanna. She has a son? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm so confused right now. I know you are. Stop, stop, right now. Don't you dare. She was stop. hurting me, you Thank you. Hey, listen to me. Stop. Okay? Yay! Stop. Look at me. Stop, right now. Stop. 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 Calm down. Okay. I'm not mad. I don't hate you. I hate myself. Stop. 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 Okay? Stop. Do as it hurt me. I don't know. Don't my shoulder. Stop. I did beat to a shoot at the okay. door. That's okay. 
So, now that you've seen all three uh, interrogations, was this an act of self-defense? Well, let me read this out to you, which is the outcome of the case. The state attorney's office determined it will not file charges in relation to the shooting death of Deanna Stevenson. Right, let me continue. The sheriff's office and state attorney's office had been investigating the woman's death for more than three months to determine whether it was justified that she was killed. In such a case, it's standard procedure for the police agency to investigate the incident, right? And followed by a review of the state, it determined that Ollie Plunkett, the mother who fired the shot, acted in self-defense when she shot Stevenson. So... I have to, let me, so you guys understand. I'm from Britain, but I now live in America. When I first came to America, I was very anti-gun, because in England, there are no guns, right? And we can't understand why in America there are so many guns. However, having lived in America, and now that I've understood the Second Amendment, I don't have an opinion on guns anymore, because it's ignorant of me to apply where I'm from onto America without understanding the context of America. Right? And the Second Amendment is the fabric um, of American life. Therefore, um, them having a gun and all that kind of stuff, that's not a problem. But should she have shot Deanna? And that's where I am stuck. I actually don't know. Because the descriptions by all the suspects was pretty graphic. Right? She grabbed her by the neck. She put her down on the floor. She was strangling her. She couldn't breathe, etc, etc, etc. Ollie did also fire a warning shot. But did she really need to kill her? Or maybe she fired the shot 
and didn't intend for her to die or maybe she didn't intend for her to maybe she like she tried shooting elsewhere and she aimed accidentally you know what i mean and from her tears uh, when realizing that diana had died to me they were genuine they were sincere but as i said i'm not a lawyer and i wasn't raised in america so the second amendment to me does not mean as much as what it would to an american so why don't you guys comment and you tell me what was the best cause of action i will remain ignorant